What is up, fam? It's your boy, Ben Tuan. Welcome to Ben Tuan's Block. This week on the article read-through vlog, we're going to be getting into central banking digital currencies, CBDCs. We're going to be breaking down the basics. What are they? Who's the biggest players? What countries are taking the lead? And we're going to be talking about some of the latest happenings about what we should be doing here in the United States and the rest of the world with these things. What are some of the benefits Stay tuned to find out some of the latest and greatest happening news with CBDCs. So Cointelegraph is telling us central bank digital currencies are dead in the water. What do you think? Leave some of your comments below. I'd love to hear them. But this article is going to tell us why they think that this is happening. So mark my words, and this is written by Mark Benz. Governments and central banks will never care about your wealth and your privacy as much as you do. Very true. I would tend to agree with that. That's exactly what CBDCs are attempting to do. They want to join the party that is cryptocurrency without actually giving their citizens the privacy and democratic freedom a truly decentralized digital currency provides. Very interesting insights because I do believe that it seems like CBDCs, these central banking currencies, just imagine the U.S. dollar what countries are doing, some countries we'll get later on in the article, we'll, we'll tell you who they are, are creating just digital cash. Same thing that we kind of have with our current legacy system. It's all zeros and ones. Um, it's essentially what's being designed is very similar things, just same shit, different day, new technology, kind of calling it this flashy CBDC. That's the way I see this, and this article is very much so in line with that, and it breaks the rest of this down for us, so let's continue. So in a recent article, I made the argument that regulation and law enforcement are a necessary part of crypto truly going mainstream. I would, I would tend to agree with that. Um, I think the countries that have been open in accepting them, like U.S. Virgin Islands, Malta, it's just kind of a, a free-for-all, which is okay because that's how they want to get things set up and that's their upside to attract investors, companies, citizens to come participate in their citizenship. So that's kind of something that some of these countries have set up. However, that's not going to work for every single place, especially much larger, larger companies who have a much larger control and influence around the world. So CBDCs won't decentralize wealth. Agree with that. Again, check. They won't decentralize power, ownership, or control of funds. They won't give individuals oversight or sovereignty over the value in their wallets. And I'm, just, I'm going to pause right here. And for those of you who are reading through this and you're a rookie or you're a noob, and that's okay. We welcome you with open arms. We say hello. We want to embrace you here in the crypto community. However, I think there's something very, very important for everyone to understand. The hype around Bitcoin and all the other cryptocurrencies going up in price is great. That's awesome. And we love to see it because we that means it's working. However, when you peel back all the layers and you really dig down to find out what and why is this crypto revolution happening, it is a transfer of power to its core. Satoshi Nakamoto wanted to take power back from those big banks back in 2008 that fucked up everything. He wanted to take that power back and decentralize it. So do these CBDCs really decentralize power or does BTC and these other decentralized cryptocurrencies really take the power back? So you got to think about that stuff. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, all these other altcoins, most of them are very decentralized. I would love to see that. The institutions creating these CBDCs will openly and outwardly promote the virtues of their innovation and their ability to use the best of cutting edge technology to make transferring value between one another more efficient. And I think that's the case too, as I think a lot of these countries recognize the power of Bitcoin and they're like, shit, we can't really control this thing. We can try to regulate it. We can put taxes in, we can do this, but at the end of the day, it's, it's always going to be there. We can't just make it stop unless you want to turn off the internet, which is never going to happen. So they're, they're going to try to spin the story, spin zone. They're going to say, oh, yeah, we, we got this new cryptocurrency. It's the new rage, guys. Everyone's got to do it. Everyone's got to do it. They're already kind of doing it with the way they've set things up. It's, it's Everything's digital. Now they're just going to kind of put a nice veil on top of that and say, yeah, it's, it's cryptocurrency now, guys. So I would agree with everything this guy is saying so far. Um, and you have to understand you're taking 
the bank's power. You're taking government's power and you're just sticking that right in your pocket because in a lot of countries, money is power. Money is influence. Money is how you can create legislation and lobby certain interests in certain legislative branches like Congress to vote on certain things. So your money is your power in a lot of countries and that governments are scared of that. Governments see this and they're like, holy shit, how do we stop this? Well, let's maybe create our own thing and call it the same thing and let's maybe advertise it where it's like, yeah, we got this new flashy thing. So let's continue here. I digress, got on my soapbox there for a second. So who leads CBDC development? Bank of Russia published a consultation paper outlining plans for a digital ruble, that's right. The Bank of Russia is working on a digital ruble. <laughs> I, this, woo, yeah, that's what I said too. But what has also been recently announced is the Russian government isn't looking so kindly on cryptocurrencies or the issuance of new tokens. I find that very fascinating. In other words, Russia wants a slice of the digital currency pie, but only if the government is controlling that digital currency. So you see what we're talking about here, guys. We're talking about governments and their control. They're losing control and they don't want their citizens to know about this. And so what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to maintain that control by putting out this new flashy central digital banking currency. And they're going to say, it's crypto. You got to get it. And guess what? You guys are going to be, you're going to love it. You're going to love it because we can track everything you do. So it, it's, it's one of those things where you kind of ask yourself, I love Russia, great country, great people. However, they are ran by a dictator. And you could argue the same thing about the United States. However, it's one of the things where it's like, why is that the first country to want to, to step in? They have maintained control over their people for so long. And they're, they feel like this is a, a chink in the armor where they could start losing even more control. So they're stepping in immediately and trying to nip this in the bud. The next country that we'll get into is China. Similar story. And I think it's it, it's one of the same, one in the same. You see Russia, you see China, and they're like, holy shit, we're gonna start losing power if this thing happens. We better step in. So to be fair, Alexei Guzinov, head of the legal department at Russia's Central Bank, did say earlier this year that owning cryptocurrency will not be against the law as long as that cryptocurrency was acquired in a jurisdiction that does not prohibit that. That's, that's just political jargon, in my opinion. I just think it's like, yeah, it's okay to own it if you don't buy it in Russia or certain parts of Russia where it's outlawed. Um, yeah, but if you own it, if you go outside of Russia and you buy it, then it's legal. It's like, yeah, like no shit, Russia. Like you could go back on your word like any second. So China is already testing a digital yuan. We've heard that. You've probably heard the news. China is also racing to try and launch its digital yuan. Trials are already running in Hong Kong's Bay Area and state-run banks are testing a digital currency wallet on a large scale. The digital currency electronic payment program that China is rolling out includes two layers, one for central banks and another for commercial banks. While commercial banks might use blockchain technology to settle some transactions, the central bank layer will definitely be centralized. Obviously, it's a central bank. I don't see how, uh, I don't see how it could operate unless it's through a DAO, um, which banks want to control. So they're not giving up power to the citizens or an organization. So very fascinating stuff here. Uh, one other little side point is the the introduction of this blockchain technology is you're hearing a lot of companies say, hey, we got blockchain. It, we got it now, guys. We got it. What's happening is a lot of companies are adopting this technology but using it internally. And it's almost like an internet versus intranet. It's a company that's using an intranet that's within an organization, the internet within an organization versus a worldwide internet. So blockchain technology is by design distributed throughout the whole globe, the whole world, where blockchain like intranet is gonna be more distributed internally, more centralized. So there's decentralized blockchains and centralized blockchains. Those are kind of the, the two apples and oranges when it comes to blockchain. So very clear distinctions when companies are saying that. So that said, control is what CBDCs are all about. Control over wealth, control over private citizens, and of course, control over data. Something, just quick side note, 
if you are using a product or service and it's free, you are the product. I saw that on Netflix, so I can't really take credit for it, but uh, I thought it was very interesting. Insights, something something very, very interesting to think about. It's CBDCs versus cryptocurrencies, not East versus West. The rush by central banks around the world to create their own digital currencies is not a battle between the East and West, far from it. It's more about pitting CBDCs against cryptocurrencies that don't have to worry about central authority censoring or controlling anything. Valid point, once again. The point is that the two combatants are not one in the same. CBDCs are really just fiat currencies in digital form, like we said earlier. The format may be different, but the goal is the same, to maintain control over the broader financial system and penalize those that don't play by the rules set out by whichever central bank or government is calling the shots. That's the whole point of fiat currency, is that the governments tell you the value of it because they say so, and they have a military to back that up. Cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology are kind of tearing that that paradigm down. And that's what these central banks are worried about. So this is why they're trying to kind of nip things in the bud. So consider for a moment that the European Central Bank is seeking input from the public on what a digital euro might look like. The ECB's website details many benefits related to developing a digital euro, particularly that the usability of a digital euro would shine whenever an extreme event like a natural disaster or pandemic occurs. But there is one notable, not so subliminal message that needs to be called out in the ECB's description of the digital euro. It could also be crucial if people were to turn to foreign digital means of payment, which might undermine financial stability and monetary sovereignty in the euro area. And this is funny, this next comment that's highlighted in green here, let's read it. The synonym for the phrase foreign digital means of payment is Bitcoin. So that, I find that very funny is that even the, the the European Central Bank recognizes that if you're not using this kind of fiat central banking currency and people start exchanging through Bitcoin, like then that completely undermines the, the digital fiat system. So in my opinion, let's take a, take a little, little pause here. And the overview that I'm seeing is if everyone slowly matriculates over to these decentralized currencies, your Bitcoins, your ETH, your Cardanos, your XRPs, all these other means of exchange that are completely decentralized, it may take 20 years, it may take 10 years, who knows? But if we can start to pull ourselves from this old legacy financial system into this new financial system and people start to recognize that, hey, Bitcoin has value just like the dollar has value then that completely undermines the whole financial system. And that's the power in this whole thing. So that's, that's one big takeaway that I'm just reading into so far. So central banks don't want you to use Bitcoin, Ether, any other decentralized currency. They want you to use the currency that can be tracked, i.e. CBDCs. They want to be able to decide which regulators and tax authorities get access to your financial data and which ones do not. And I understand there's valid concerns with anti-money laundering and all that kind of stuff. But with a CBDC, they can literally see the point that it was minted to the point to how many other times exchange hands with whom, what wallet, who's the owner of that wallet. They're going to be able to see every little detail of every little transaction. So that's kind of the, the stance from central banks that you're seeing here. So they can't beat us, nor can they join us. Keeping value decentralized and keeping the power in the hands of individual consumers is what gives cryptocurrency its power, not government-backed digital currencies that simply use blockchain technology. Central banks can certainly use blockchain and claim that they're joining something they can't beat, but the reality is they can't join. And this is what we've broken down so far. So now central banks are trying to fight cryptocurrency revolution. So this is where the lobbying takes place. And there's lots of rumbles right now that Trump's going to do some sort of uh, legislation that's going to ban some sorts of cryptocurrencies or the use, how it's used. And we're going to see it, but I don't care. I think it's going it, to, it doesn't matter what kind of regulations they, they put. The same thing happened back after World War II with FDR, where they outlawed gold. I hope that doesn't happen with cryptocurrencies where they force everyone to give their cryptocurrencies to the government. That then just recreates this, this fiat system. It's just in a digital format. So I don't think it's going to go there. That's like, you know, an atomic world, world war, I feel like just waiting to happen. But 
I do feel like the, in the realm of possibilities, there, there's going to be regulations coming down the pipeline. And I know in the past I have knocked the United States for taking things too slowly, but we see these other countries, China and Russia, doing these things, and they are leading the way in CBDCs. It, it makes me question their motives as to why. And we, we saw in this article, it is about power and the exchange of that power. Banks don't want to lose their power and governments don't want to either. But we need to give power back to the individuals. That's the power of cryptocurrencies being decentralized and decentralized blockchain. Those are my thoughts for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was a little bit longer, but hopefully you were able to understand what's going on with these CBDCs because it is so important to distinguish between centralized blockchain and decentralized blockchain and the importance of both. And that's where a decentralized blockchain and DeFi are going to be part of the future. Imagine the world where there is no banks, no banks whatsoever. And I feel like DeFi is going to take us there. It may be 20 years, it may be 30 years, who knows? But I believe that one day everyone else will see the value of this and understand we won't be using banks. There will be a completely decentralized finance system. And you know, we'll see. These decentralized banks are, are gonna try to be big players, but we'll see what happens. So I hope that's what happens in the future is that we do have a more decentralized finance system. We will see. I appreciate you guys joining. Until next time, deuces.